Hello everyone, my name is Yakir and welcome to my quick Java tutorial live sessions. These sessions basically are meant to bring you uh, specific Java problems and topics and these sessions are also uh, being recorded live so they will be very quick and to the point but in the other end will be also uh, probably more casual and direct as I'm recording them on the go. So what you see right now is uh, my computer with uh, a compiler named BlueJ opened. Um, so today we're going to talk about backtracking recursion. As you may know, there are a few different types of recursion in Java. There is tail recursion, uh, backtracking, and regular recursion. And this practice for today is going to be about um, backtracking. So what backtracking is, basically, is whenever your program requires uh, back and forward steps in order to get to the final solution. So basically, um, it could be that you're requested to, uh, to solve a maze, and in order to solve a maze, to see uh, which parts are open, you need to go straight, and if, uh, if uh, you come across a wall, you need to go back a step, and then you need to try the next move, which is, uh, let's say, right, try to go there, and if you come across a wall again, you come back and then check the next move, which is left, and so on. Um, it could be for a maze, as I mentioned, it could be for, uh, let's say, you're playing solitaire in your computer, and from the current uh, position of the cards, for, for, from the current uh, placements, you may be stuck and you're asking uh, for the computer to solve the, um, the game for you. So, um, in the background, what will happen is the computer will find, will seek for uh, all the possible solutions, possible ways, and eventually it will come out with the right way to solve the solitaire game. Um, as you can think for yourself, you can take the same principle um, to apply with a uh, checkers board. Uh, for example, you want to find a solution in a checkers board in order to win. Um, find the way out of um, a room in a game. So just imagine uh, everything that requires you to uh, perform some moves and then if those moves fail, continue to the next move and uh, so on. So it requires basically to uh, make that move and then um, come back if it's not successful. So in here we have a very uh, very well known I think uh, backtracking uh, problem called neighbors problem and basically what it means uh, in the neighbors problem we are getting uh, we're getting coordinates to a specific house and then we need to find the biggest chunk of houses that is attached to uh, the houses that been given to us at a specific point. So let's say uh, if you can, uh, if you take a look here, we have a two-dimensional matrix here that represents our, our world. Um, it combines from zeros and ones. Okay, that's an int uh, two-dimensional array. <coughs> so uh, the zeros are basically nothing, and ones are basically representing houses. They represent houses in the neighborhood. Now, um, let's say, for example, I spoke before, I, I said before that uh, we are getting a specific house as a parameter. So let's say we are getting this house as a parameter. Uh, it's uh, in uh, uh, row number two and column number five, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Two and five. So we got this house, and we need to uh, we need to return uh, the answer of how many uh, houses. Uh, what is the biggest chunk of houses? How many houses basically are touching uh, or connected to the same house that we got? Okay. So how do we know what is connected to it? Uh, so let's see. Uh, if uh, in this example. The next house that is connected to it is is here. It's connected to it from the west side of it, from the left side of it. And then we go here, and then the next house that is connected to it is at north, and there is another house that is connected to it uh, from the south. 
and then from here there is another house connected to it from west and then another house connected to that one uh, from the north so overall we, if you count them we start from here let's say one two three four five six and the answer that uh, should be returned is six because this is the chunk that is connected together all these uh, houses together so if we uh, run our uh, method we see the maze the printout of the not the maze sorry the neighborhood and uh, the number six this is the biggest chunk <coughs> and uh, the parameters that is been given the location of the house is row two column five okay now how does it work basically after we created the, the matrix we just printed it out on the screen like you may know uh, if you have reached that far to our uh, recursion you probably know how to print your uh, matrix i assume um, and then um, we call this method, which actually will calculate the biggest chunk of, num of uh, neighbors and bring us the, this is the, the method. Okay, and let's see what this method contains from. So this method gets as a parameter um, the matrix, the two-dimensional array, and then the i, and then i and j which is basically the location of the uh, given house so this is for the rows and this is for the columns okay great now um the first thing we, we check is if is valid now what is valid what is is valid is valid is uh, another method I, I wrote that also takes the matrix and the position and basically checks if uh, the position of, uh, of the house um, is within bond boundaries of um, of the neighborhood so it's not for example I can't request for a house that is like outside of the neighborhood let's say I have a neighborhood size 5 by 5 I can't ask for a house that is uh, at uh, index 6 or minus 2 so uh, it has to be inside the metric itself this checks for the boundaries but also it's not only that it's um it's all times gonna check the point that you're giving to that method so every time this method recursively is gonna um, perform every time it performs um it will check is valid with the current point that you um you're, you're gonna give uh, as a parameter and we'll see that um very soon Okay, so basically it also checks not only the boundaries, but it also checks that if actually there is a house there. So if uh, at the position that we are, um, it is equals to equals to one. So if we uh, at the beginning we are here, so it equals to one. Okay, good. So okay, so this is uh, the first time it equals to one. Okay, so is valid basically is true. It will return true. Okay, because it's inside the boundaries and also it, uh, equal, it equals to 1. Otherwise it returned false, but in our case, at the beginning with the house in 2.5, it will return as true. Okay, so if it returns as true, everything in here will be performed. <coughs> so, the first thing, we'll take the same spot, the same position. It's currently one. It's two five. There is a one there. There is a house. It will uh, um, it will make it to be three, okay, which means that we want to just like mark it uh, to know which houses we've been visited in, okay. And then we have all these recursion calls here, but before that we have the return, okay. Now. Um, in recursion, what happens is the compiler is gonna read the return keyword, but it also sees that we have uh, these methods. Well, first of all, it will see that, and it will see, okay, but this here calls to the method again. So what will happen in that case? It will totally, completely ignore from the return one plus here. It completely ignores that because we have still method calls this is just how it works this is just how uh, java works and many uh, programming language 
when recursion is involved. There is the return here, but also there is the calls to the method. So uh, this return part will be ignored completely. And okay, so so far we marked this house, which is at index two and five as free. Now we're gonna um, ignore this and now we're going to call the same method and count again. But this time we are going to transfer it as a parameter whatever is um, at the down point, at the below point, below index of the current index. So as you can see here, down. So we take the two uh, and five, but now we will transfer, it's like two, this is two, okay? Plus one is three, so we will transfer to the method, we will call the method again with three and five. So this is the down point. So we were here, we will call to, to the method again with this. Let's see what happens. Okay, so three and five. We came into the method again. We're checking, is it valid? No. Why not? Because um, this is here is zero, therefore it's not valid, which means everything here is not committed and there's nothing <coughs> else to do. So basically, you know, this is not valid, so all these things here are not going to be performed. So the only thing left is to return a zero. So, okay, we return a zero. Um, and now what happens? As we return the zero, uh, where do we return it? Okay, uh, to the same place we called the method form. So basically, uh, we called it from here, right? We uh, gave it, <coughs> we gave it the down index. Uh, we have the index basically of three and five. So it, it returned to here. And then since we have more things to perform, we haven't done yet, it will go to this next line, here. Basically now I just want you to see uh, the debugger for that, so, it could, so you could understand uh, better what I'm talking about. Um, it's all about stack calls. So now, uh, so every time you call a method, there is the stack in Java, that uh, saves all the parameters and all the stacks, st stack calls. So, um, okay, so for the first time, as you can see here, we were here, and then we called this method and count. So then, this is our stack. In our stack, you see here, it's like first time with all these parameters, with those, all this. Uh, you know, you have the i and the j and the matrix. All of that is saved in memory in our stack. Now, let's uh, progress. This, that was valid for the first time. It was 2 and 5, as you remember. So, mark this as 3. And this is ignored, as we said. Now, it will go to here. Now, basically, it will call to the method again. So, you see it jump into here. Let's see. I mean, jump into the beginning of it. Uh, with three and five, okay, with the um, with the index below the uh, the previous house. But as we uh, call to the method again, remember the first time we entered the method, it was the first layer of the stack, first time we uh, the first time of the stack, uh, the first um, I guess uh, sequence of the stack, and. Then we call that with the down, so that's like the second time we called, uh, we put this method in the stack. Okay, and then what will happen? And then as we said, this wasn't valid because 3 and 5, there isn't a house there, there is 0. So it's not even going to uh, go all the way here, it just returns a 0. So what the return will do in this case? As you see, there are two uh, stack calls here, the first one and the second one, and now on the second one that we are currently in, uh, we come across the word return. So we can when we come across that, uh, we just uh, return from the method, which means we will exit it. This one will be deleted. Okay, return the 
the result returns zero and therefore that's not needed anymore. So it makes sense. Like for example, if you uh, have a method that returns you something, you don't need you do, you no longer need this method. So that therefore, when it returns zero, this second call to the method is not required anymore. Let's see. Okay, so it disappeared, and then we left with the false call. Okay, but as you remember, the false call. Um, um, the second call, when it returned the zero, it uh, returned it to here because this is what called it. Okay, we called to the method from here, so then when we return the zero, the zero will jump to here. Okay, but we still have things to do. We have all these rows here, so let's see. It will jump now to this row. Okay, and we call to the method again. And what will happen is you see here another call sequence. Okay, that's the second call now. The, uh, the previous one, the previous second one wasn't successful. So here uh, we have the parameters 2 and 6. Let's see. 2, this is 5, this is 6. Okay, it checks what's on the right. On the right there is a house. So again, returns 0 where it will be returned to to the one who called it so here return to here but there's nothing we do with that zero def, and then we have still uh, the next line we, we, we want to perform so this line that checks with the up parameter we call to the method again with the up parameter, so now it's 1 and 5, let's see, 1 and 5, there is a house there, so again return 0, to come back to here, and then uh, we do nothing with that 0, but we have another call, so then we call it with the left parameter, we go into the method again, that's our second call, you see it's like, the um, the previous calls weren't successful, therefore they just came back and it continued to the last one, to the left one. Let's see if we have something on the left. And we do. Uh, so it's 2 and 4. Let's see. Uh, 2 and 4. We do have a house here, so let's see what happens. We mark it as 3. <coughs> this is ignored for now. Okay, and we, we go on. So basically now... Um, 2 and 4, there is a house here, we uh, marked it as 3, and now we um, we reserve the second call as it was successful finally, and continue uh, and do uh, this uh, all process all over again. So basically we go in again and check down, and then check right, then up, until we get a successful result. So let's see, from 2 and 4. 2 and 4, um, now it will check down, basically, so 3 and 4, there is a house there indeed, so tried, this is ignored, and you see here there is like another call that is successful, the fault call, then we check the down, well there wasn't anything down, so basically return 0, return to the same one who called it, and then the next one is right, let's check with the right, also, there was nothing there, so we turned 0 to the same one who called it. Now, up. Um, let's see what happens with up. There's nothing there. We turned 0. See? It was 4. Now it returned again to 3. Now, let's check uh, left. Left. You see the, all this uh, call sequence here? So now, now, there is 4, but it wasn't successful, so we turned 0. We turned clears out the last call and um, and we came back one step back and we're checking again if we have anything else left to the right then up just does its thing and then whenever it uh, just finishes everything, which means that eventually all the calls will be replaced 
and uh, we toned okay and as for uh, as eventually there's nothing left to do okay all the houses that were to be found at the same chunk were found so basically at the end we will come across this uh, return one plus and then every time we return the successful uh, call sequences we will return plus one so basically as you remember in this call sequence we had uh, the successful calls registered the first one was successful the second one was successful the third one was successful and so on so all of this when we have eventually have nothing else to do we return one plus for every successful uh, step in our stack for every uh, successful call so eventually all the successful calls means that everywhere that the war houses in so eventually um, we uh, just floated the result every time that we came back every time that we returned from a successful uh, call we returned it plus one so we increased the return number plus one so the first house was one then two three four five six and then um, we just return it floating all the way to the start and then this method finished but we still returned i mean it's finished and the number six will be uh, returned so this is the number that is um, of the houses of the calls that we committed successful calls okay th this uh, I know that it may be not very uh, easy it may be uh, it might be uh, difficult to um, to watch and understand and recursion is kind of ease it takes some time to uh, um, to learn it and you learn it by practice and by running it with a debugger but it's very uh, essential that you know the uh, the steps and the principles and eventually you will be able to see the patterns of uh, the recursion and you will just know how to improvise and I mean not like really improvise but how to think about a solution to a new kind of problem that uh, that they're giving you based on the same principles that you've learned here so as you know a backtracking solution well you will also know how to apply it to other practices but again this is one of the most uh, tricky tricky parts parts in uh, programming recursion is not simple so it might take you a few times to uh, just uh, repeat this video and copy the code and try it with a debugger like I did and see how it works so hope you will succeed and if you have any further comments or questions please leave them down below and if you like this video I will appreciate a thumbs up or if you sub subscribe or both so until the next session I'm Akir and I would like to thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.